Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Today we're going to talk about the work of Ahmed Ozman in what's probably going to be a two-part series. Most Actually, it will be a two-part series. Maybe not three. I think I can condense this into two. I just don't want to make this one video to where it's like 40-something minutes long. I kind of want to cap out at like maybe 20 minutes or something. But anyway, um, I thought this is very interesting because um, this work is not covered very thoroughly in term in terms of like what's on youtube uh radio stations um it doesn't get much mainstream well it has gotten main not endorsements but um although his osman's work has been endorsed by people like graham hancock and robert Baval, it's largely to do with egyptology and it's largely to do with uh there's a lot of corruption and a lot of uh stagnation in egyptology right now so osman's work which dates back i think he started investigating this line of inquiry regarding the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, and its direct relation with Egyptian history, probably since the late 80s. Uh, and this idea wasn't discovered by Osman himself. It was discovered, uh, I think it was throughout the years it was talked about. And the most prominent name that comes up is Sigmund Freud, who had a book about it, which we'll kind of get into later. But yeah, Ahmed Osman, he's like, uh, he's a researcher. I think he's also a lawyer. Uh, I think he has a PhD. He's written a bunch of books about the subject, like right here, Stranger in the Valley of Kings, Christianity and Ancient Egyptian Religion, Moses and Akhenaten, The Secret History of Egypt at the Time of the Exodus, The Lost City of the Exodus, The Archaeological Evidence Behind the Journey Out of Egypt. So you guys kind of get where I'm going with this. It centers on these biblical events that have been dismissed by archaeologists and this basically part one of, of this two part series is trying to fill you guys in on the context and what's actually being claimed here. So, by the way, that's a picture of Osman right there. So we have this, this guy, Osman, he's making all, all these connections between uh, figures in the Torah, the Hebrew Bible, uh, Old Testament, and then those in ancient Egyptian history, specifically the Amarna period and the latter part of the 18th dynasty. And he compares this biblical timeline with the archaeological timeline that's backed by hard evidence in, from geology, Egyptology, linguistics, all of these other uh, disciplines, mainly found within the realm of ar ar uh, archaeology. So what Osman wants to do is he wants to update the quote inaccurate Bible, Greek, and Roman information about the pharaohs of ancient Egypt by integrating this archaeological evidence. Because the before archaeology really took off, which was about the mid 1800s, maybe a little bit later than that, the only information that the earth had about pharaohs in ancient Egypt was from either the, these old biblical accounts uh, classical Greek and Roman accounts. That's it. Um, so digging up all these tablets and stuff like the Dead Sea Scrolls and and all these other um, po uh, pottery fragments and all these all these other written uh, accounts. And then we started ha having we started developing a repository of information regarding ancient Egypt. And so without a doubt, the archaeologists knew that. A place like ancient Egypt existed. It was a vast empire, and there are other tribes. But they, the first thing they wanted to do was to see if the Bible was true. They wanted to verify all the dates given by the Bible. So Osman wants to use this and integrate it into the uh, biblical timeline and amend some dates just to get closer to the truth. The problem with that is when the archaeologists, the first wave of archaeologists wanted to see if the Bible was verified and when they couldn't, when they couldn't find anything to, dating to that period uh, mentioned in the Bible. So for example, the Davidic kingdom is dated to about 1000 BC based on the Bible. But when ar archaeology, they couldn't find a place that fit the description of the Davidic kingdom at 1000 BC. So because of that, archaeologists sort of dismissed it as, well, I guess it's fiction then. I guess the Bible is a work of fiction. 
I guess, um, the Davidic Kingdom's fiction, the fact that Moses was in Egypt is fiction, so let's just um, leave it at that. Uh, Osman is coming from, hey, no, 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 the Bible may very well have a, a, a core based on truth, historical truth, but maybe somewhere along the way the, the characters got obscured or jumbled up or they were misplaced in times of history for whatever reason. So what he did was he traced the archaeological timeline back 500 years and he discovers a kingdom that fits the biblical description of the Davidic kingdom, which actually dates about 1550 to 1450 BC, starting with the historical figure, the Pharaoh Thutmose III. And he's, he holds the distinction of going past the Euphrates River and conquering those lands, as well as the, the Holy Land where Jerusalem is now. Um, which at the time was not called Jerusalem. It was called uh, Kadesh, I think. So, yeah, so that's what o Osman did. So he just investigated history, and then he found not only Thutmose III, who is the equivalent of David, according to Osman, which we'll go into probably in the next video and get more specific, all the way down to Moses or uh, Akhenaten or Amenhotep IV. Uh, these guys have a bunch of different names. So... Because of this, it, he wrote a bunch of different books, and he wrote not only about the Amarna period, which is the, the period in question, the historical period in question, he also did this with Jesus, which I'm not going to go into now. Like he, I think he thinks uh, Jesus was mixed up with Joshua, and they're the same person, but anyway, so uh, this basically led to a line of inquiry where he analyzed each uh, a biblical fit and see where they fit in the archaeological record and if you look him up online there's a lot of uh, disagreement with his assessment obviously there's there's a lot of um, criticism of his work and after having gone through it myself I feel like it survives a lot of the fire of the criticism so as long as more and more archaeological uh, digs and excavations churn more and more information that can shed more and more light and therefore truth out of the Bible and the Torah and all these other written works, uh, then I think the better off he is. And some of the stuff that he, he uh, alludes to are pretty mind-blowing. So the first thing to really understand all this is taking into account the context of the Torah. So it was written in Babylon around 600 BC, and Babylon was basically the powerhouse back then. Uh, they were uh, very successful, and they had a lot of power and influence around this time period, and they existed almost concurrently with the Egyptian kingdom. So the original writers of the, of the Torah, they all had different oral accounts and other written stories so they got together organized them into a chronology and then made the most sense they made they basically organized them into a chronology that they agreed to and that made the most sense to them so that's a big deal because you don't know what kind of impressions they would have about four almost 700 years after the fact of the 18th dynasty, the Amartya period and all this. So if what Osman is saying is true, then the original writers of the Torah must have come away seven, again, 700 year gap after the fact with these stories that they just put together in a chronology. Um, so it perhaps, I guess Osman's suggestion is, and this is just my inference here. His suggestion to me is that the original writers of the Torah, they had either like a bad taste in their mouth or they got information that was based on truth, but was obviously obscuring some sort of connection between the Israelites and or the Hebrew tribes and Egypt, the Egyptians. So this idea, again, going back to the Exodus and the Amarna period in the 18th dynasty, Osman's premise surrounds these events. So it was very important that you guys know what, what these events are and what they correspond to in history. So uh, the Exodus is a real historical event that resulted from the end of the 18th dynasty and the beginning of the 19th dynasty of ancient Egypt. So the Ramesside dynasty, 
uh, they stamped out any anything any association from the that the um, Amarna kings had of the 18th dynasty to the Israelites, uh, and that is the whole impetus or the whole catalyst rather of this entire uh, distortion of, of the recorded biblical history regarding uh, the Davidic kingdom and all of David's uh, lineage from there. And this is, why would the Ramesside kingdom want to do this? Well, it was during the Amarna period that a pharaoh descending from both the Israelite and Egyptian bloodlines were united in one person, and that person is Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV. And again, he, this guy, this Akhenaten guy, is is paralleled with Moses uh, for a lot of different reasons that I'll go into in the next video. But it has to do with monotheism, the Ten Commandments, um, even their their Genesis. There's a lot of parallels that are very very interesting. So again, when the Israelites were cast out, the Hebrews and Egyptians wanted to scrub all evidence of their association from the historical record. Um, a lot of this has to do with Egypt itself. So the Amarna period, again, I mentioned monotheism. Well, there was a priest class that wanted to keep polytheism a thing. But when Akhenaten ascended the throne, then kind of all hell kind of broke loose. There were a lot of people who opposed him. They wanted... Although Akhenaten did, he didn't immediately, he didn't shun all the other uh, gods, but he clearly placed his god, Aten, above all other gods. And that, some people don't consider that monotheism. I just think that's a slippery soap that will eventually be monotheism. Like if he had it his way, he would ha have everybody worship this one god. But the fact that there's so much opposition and it would cause so, so much of a, of a dust up that I think he just sort of it was kind of a compromise but however way you slice it Akhenaten was a thorn in the side of the priest class which eventually turned into the Ramesside dynasty and it spelled the, the, the downfall of the Amarna kings and Tutankhamun is is also the the uh, one of the kings in this line as well which uh Osman does equate him to a biblical figure, but we're not going to go into that now because it's not part of like the actual premise of this video. So again, no doubt the original writers of the Torah had these actual historic events in mind, mainly Exodus, which is the, the, the attempted severance between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And so the characters of this period were either obscured, distorted, or omitted. That's, very inter that's a very important distinction. This is all according to Osman, by the way, guys. I'm just trying to uh, make his his uh, the his overall thesis and premise available to you guys if you guys don't want to read his books and stuff. Uh, the Israelites, 40 years of wandering, etc., all this hardship. They seem to lose their identity as a people due to this suppression. So historical holes are filled in the Torah with biblical figures such as David and uh, Sarah, Abraham, um, and all these, uh, like Moses and all these... Uh, uh, these figures, these biblical figures. Now, what maybe Moses was a real person or whatever. Let's just say he was, ba and so let's say he was a person who was based on Akhenaten or something like that. His placement is still off. Like the the timeline is still not really calibrated. So so that's very very peculiar. That a lot of academics, including a guy like Sigmund Freud who saw this in like the I think this is like one of his last books that he wrote in the 1920s or something like that um, it's called Mosesism here and he and Osman they both regard the Israelites as descendants of Thutmose the uh, third who by the way again is supposed to be David the equivalent of David and therefore the illegitimate son of Egypt so they were they came into the relationship with Egypt, Egypt as Hebrew tribes, represented as the Hebrew tribes, and then they came out as Israelites, basically. Or I, some people use the two, the Hebrew tribes and Israelites, interchangeably or whatever. But I think King David, was, his main distinction in the Bible was uniting the kingdom of Judea and then the the Hebrew and therefore the Hebrew tribes, and they became known as the Israelites as a whole. But either way, that's just like a semantics uh, interpretation thing. It's not really important. 
Um, the last thing I want to cover before I uh, end this video is the actual Amarna period. So the Amarna period, again, uh, Akhenaten onward, is about 1400 to 1300 BC. Now, the 1500 date was around the time of David and and Thutmose the third. By the time you get down to Akhenaten, Akhenaten's like the great great grandchild of of uh, Thutmose the third. So he rules for 17 years. I talked about monotheism. He had he had a lot of uh, he he ru he ruffled a lot of feathers in the priesthood, and again the Amarna period corresponds to the biblical accounts of King David's lineage. So the Amarna kings descend from a bloodline that again I mentioned this earlier unites Egyptian and Israelite people or the Hebrew tribes their heritage, and so these are the four characters that I'll focus on in the next episode. Uh, David equated to Thutmose the third. Abraham, as described as the man from Ur, and another, uh, um, I think either the Amarna letters or some other uh, form. These are actual archaeological artifacts that that basically record these this history. And the man from Ur is equated to be Abraham uh, because of uh, that strong connection from where they are. Ur, again, is, is, is uh, Babylon Fertile Crescent area. Anyway, we'll talk about that in the next episode. Solomon is equated with Amenhotep the third, again of David or Thutmose's line, and then Amenhotep the fourth Akhenaten. So that's what you have to look forward to uh, in the next episode. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments or maybe something I left out. If you're familiar with uh, Ahmed Osman's work, it, let's try not to get too crazy in the comments. That's just like my main fear. I don't want anybody to uh, attack anybody. Uh, I just want like respectful discussion um, because I'm not shy about man if they resort to obviously ridiculous attacks. So let's keep it clean. Uh, I'll have the next video hopefully tomorrow or the day after. And then after that, we'll probably do, I'll probably go in a different direction like um, analyzing certain, let's say, for example, Bible verses or it doesn't even have to be biblical or religious. It could be actual uh, artifacts in the archaeological uh, repository and just go over each each one uniquely and then I'll just give my interpretation you guys can give your interpretation in the in the uh, comments as well so anyway let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys later